Hello and welcome to another edition of the Weekly Market Brief. This is Sven Henrik from Northman Trader. It's April 13th, 2019. Titling this edition here, Mind the Gaps. And I'm referring to both the technicals, but also some of the narrow stiffs that are taking place in, in markets. Um, obviously, I could have titled this Mind the Gaps, because this is seemingly the never-ending rally that keeps on ticking with absolutely no retesting of, of any sort. So let's kind of walk through the technicals a bit uh, and keep you updated as to the latest and greatest. Before I do that, just a quick thank you, everybody. Uh, I just started this video channel here a few weeks ago, kind of a, it, as a test to see if there was any interest, and I'm, I'm very much appreciative of this uh, interest that has been coming in. Uh, otherwise, there's no point talking to dead air. So I'm glad you guys are enjoying the videos, and thank you very much. If you're watching it now and haven't subscribed, obviously feel free to do that as well to, to get updates with the latest videos. And just for everybody, you know, in these in these technical updates, I'm going to be referring to a number of charts that are evolving. Uh, this is the, kind of some of the latest public articles that I put out. You can see them on the on the website, and so any of these charts that I may refer be for referring to, you can read up in, in more detail in terms of the background where this is all coming from. One one aspect here I want to talk about a little bit today is, is the combustion article I put out late in the week. And, and the notion was basically, you know, we are going into this massive potential blow-off rally because we have now, despite still good coming earnings coming in and despite low unemployment at 49-year low for, for jobless claims, and we have the Fed at complete capitulation, and obviously I have been on the record saying that a lot of this rally is completely driven by the Fed. Uh, they pushed everybody into high-risk assets again, and so with, with the combination of buybacks and the, the continued China trade deal carried out there, are, are they creating kind of this massive blow-off uh, rally uh, that will ultimately and in tears and you know obviously we we when you look at charts like this well what what are you supposed to say what's your entry point where's your if you're not fully long you know what's what are you going to do here you're hoping for you know the best if you buy here or here it works it keeps working it's it's a relentless trend up uh, this is uh, here 15 weeks we had one down week on, on the nasdaq and it's pretty much stretching to the extremes of many levels and I, I keep pointing out to this junk chart here how much of this rally is really related to uh, hot, this, this move into high yield 86 RSI vertically up I mean you, you, you basically just have to laugh and of course we all know where the trigger was this was January 4th when Jay Powell did the, his famous cave on on the balance sheet flexibility and then obviously nothing's changed the since but this, this kind of just highlights how one-sided, how extreme all this is, and to the extent that the equity rally actually has been influenced by this, uh, if, you, if you get to in any type of two-way action, you would have to expect that there's going to be some correlated action on, on the equity side. But at this point, it keeps defying, uh, what do you call it, reason. But going back to the combustion example uh yeah, this was really the case to say well look we have three trend lines major trend lines major trend lines i'm gonna have to emphasize this again this is from the 2009 lows this is the trend line you've all seen we keep tagging it from the underside this was the the topping trend line that's formed here from the 2007 highs into the 2018 highs it's all very clean stuff here and then of course the mega trend line back from 90 from the 1987 crash and this is a fascinating one simply because it's it's worked so well for so long, right? We had the 87 low, we had the 2002, 2003 lows. It was it was it was even a little support area here during the 2008 crash, and then of course it marked the tops in 2014, 2015. But we had these busts above uh, temporarily here in 2018, but then obviously it all fell apart. But the interesting aspect was simply to say, well, all of these are converging here at this major apex. And this is obviously, I pointed this out as a theoretical, but you, you can imagine that it, where markets to just keep levitating up to here, something of major resistance would take place here. So simply because all of these trend lines have shown to be relevant. 
uh, and the point I was making is, uh, ironically, all this ends in October. If you look at this a little bit more granularly here, this is a chart I recreated from my wife. She hates it when I steal stuff, so I better give her credit here. But this is uh, obviously another scenario here that also kind of relates to the, the previous one. And as I just say, it's basically here's this upper trend line, and this move can just basically go in, in some sort of broadening wedge pattern, if you will, or megaphone, if, if you will. So it could it could tag this upper trend line again. Doesn't need to do it here. It could do it here. You know, the move could slow down. It could just kind of you know even correct a bit and then just kind of drag onto here. But this is your your 3, 330, 100 type of S&P target. And then the notion would be there would be this, this massive return back to the lower trend line, which then could find support here, or you could even find support lower into, into the 2015 high. So this, this could be a massive, uh, obviously, reversal move. That's why I talked about you know, upside risk maybe being another 5-7% on, on this move, but then you have massive 25-30% risk to the downside, or even even more. And, you know, when you look at a move like this, uh, you have to recognize it's also not without precedence. These type of moves have happened before, right? And this is the, you know, obviously this is the Dow this year on a weekly basis, just nothing but up in the first part of the year. And it looks very similar actually to what we've seen here in 1987, right? This is the, the classic example. It went, it kept squeezing up. Then we have some consolidation and that may just be coming our way here as well into April and May. And then another big move higher for that big final blow off top. What's, what's obviously interesting is back then this happened, the peak happened in August and then ultimately the crash was in, in October, which obviously is of interest because the convergence of the trend lines, but that's, that's all speculative. And, you know, before you all assume, okay, now this is what's going to happen. I, I don't know what's going to happen here. This is, this is pretty fascinating. I'm keeping a close eye on, obviously, on the technicals. And to me, the, the bear case that obviously everyone is now dismissive of has still not been dispro uh, disproven. I don't want to sound stubborn about it, but I'm being very factual here. So, for example, this is a chart I posted on Twitter on Friday. This is the spider. And, you know, while we talk a lot about 2009 trend lines, we can't forget we also have shorter term trend lines. And this is the 2016 trend line that acted as very, very steady support. Here was the, uh, the 2016 lows. Here was the U.S. election. Here was the low of the February 2018 correction. Support, support, support. And then it got wiggly here, right? This, is, this was during this time frame in the fall, was, uh, October uh, and into November, and then it became a clear resistance. I mean, it is a very clean, clean, clean trend line. And now following this big correction in, in December, look what we've done. We've had this massive move up, and on Friday, and you can't quite see it on, on this chart, I suppose, but on Friday, we tagged that trend line again. I mean, we're, we're just really, really close again. At the same time, we formed this massive wedge pattern here, that is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. So, so something is going to happen here, right? I mean, either we're going to break above or we're going to, if we fall away from here, this wedge is going to break. So we're actually at a very, very keen, clear point. But not only that, is that happening? Uh, you have to put this in context of this larger 2009 trend line because we still keep tagging it. You know, it's been obviously amazing to watch to see this tag, tag, tag. But this trend line, this is in one of the videos I mentioned, you know, th this can keep going, uh, but it continues to be resistance. And, and so now we've rallied 24% of the, of the lows here, but we're still at the trend line and we're still below the highs. Now you can argue, well, we, you know, I think probably fair to say most people now expect new highs to come, but um, nothing's been proven yet. As extreme as this move has been, it's still here in this vicinity of this trend line. I'm just showing you a monthly chart on, on, on the ES futures, so you know I'm not you know, being selective here. This is the same trend line, and it's, it literally stopped right here. So we'll see. Uh, it is fascinating to see, to see no volatility what, whatsoever, but this wedge is clean. 
and it continues to be claimed. Uh, and we are about to fall out of this pattern. So the good news for everybody is we're going to stop talking about this wedge pattern because it's going to come to an end very shortly. Um, I've not usually, you know, it's rare to see a wedge go to the very apex, but it certainly could be the case here. And now we get to the title aspect of this, this whole video here, which is mind the gaps. There's a gap up here. This was actually the early October gap. And if you, if you think of markets as a magnet, then this entire run could have been simply be to fill this open gap. And I'd be very curious to see if we get there, what happens then, because obviously we are stretched on, on many indicators and we haven't really corrected. And this is a very tight pattern here. So watch that space if, if that happens. Let me speak a little bit about the gaps also in context of the structure of this rally. This is the basically here the month of April so far. Um, again, much of the action is driven by gap ups. And then this odd thing happens, right? We have basically the same program rerunning every single day. You have a gap up, then you basically have some sort of tight price consolidation and then a, and an upward channel forms uh, with a bias upwards channel in a really tight price consolidation. There's really not much to to rally on here or to to do anything with. It's it's just very tight. Another gap up. In this case, got retested. But look at this period here. What what do you do with that? I mean, again, gap up, tight range, gap down, tight range, gap down, tight range, and and that's basically frustrating traders left left and right because you don't really have much to work with. Uh, and then, of course, Friday, we're doing the same thing that we did the last Friday, right? This was uh, the Friday before we gapped up tight range, gap up tight range. And that actually, to me, is probably increasing the biggest risk to these markets because we have all these open gaps that remain unfilled. And if you put this in a larger picture, this is all the way back to, to January. Just one gap after another, after another. There's still a smaller gap in there somewhere, which I couldn't fit on this chart. But basically, now you're looking at eight unfilled gaps. And if this here, this this 29, 20, 25 gap, is has been a magnet, imagine what all these gaps are. My view remains that at some point this year, many of these gaps will get filled. Speaking of gaps. Guess what we did on Friday? We filled a VIX gap going all the way back to the beginning of October. So while the SPX gap still hasn't quite filled, VIX has already filled the gap and we're back in maximum complacency. And when people say a low VIX is bullish, really? I mean, yes, it, it can consolidate. Um, but things can change quickly, as we saw in, in October. So just because a VIX is low does not mean things are well. In fact, in, in this case, it may just indicate that the VIX will get ready for another spike higher. And speaking of open gaps, I've been mentioning this gap here on the VIX, the 2024 20, area, that will get filled at some point. NDX. I pointed out this piece uh, this week. There were, uh, you know, the, the another wedge in the wall, and it is so similar to what we saw uh, last summer, and it kept going, it kept going. Except, and I repeat, this wedge here is tighter, it's steeper, and you know, it just kind of keeps levitating. It hasn't broken, obviously, but it only will take a couple of real down days to break this pattern. In last September, that break didn't initially not matter. It eventually did matter. So again, a key pattern to keep an eye on. And just for reference, this is a linear chart, I know, but my God, look how vertical this price action is. It's very reminiscent of here. Of course, we were at lower prices then, but still, it you can see it in the data, it's producing some readings and it's producing the highest upside deviation on the MACD ever. So if you're bullish NASDAQ, you must kind of hope that this continues. I don't see a 
slope like this continuing uh, in, indefinitely. We'll get some earnings next week and see if that has any impact on, on the NASDAQ. But this is pretty wild stuff. So again, if, if, if you put this in context with this really big blow-off move into 3,100, you know, then you then you're really talking about massive, massive extremes, and I would argue we're we're kind of already seeing this on this chart. BPSPX has kind of that's actually the BPNDX, and it's kind of flat line here at the 84 level. Again, 83 was kind of the peak in January 2018 before we had that 10 percent drop down. We still have the wedge here, and oddly enough, despite on Friday. Uh, NDX making another new high. The 80 it actually dropped from 84 to 83, so it may mean nothing, but maybe worth watching as well. This chart does not stay at 84 indefinitely. Okay, so it's uh, as as little as little movement as we've had on on this chart. You know, you typically you see a lot more back and forth on 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 the action. And that has yet to take place. So I think that's a key point to, to keep an eye on. Here's the monthly chart, the same thing. And I just wanted to point this out. Uh, obviously, as a lot of people are expecting new highs, and it may happen. Uh, I, I can't say it won't happen. But as it, if it were to happen, keep in mind, this is a big, big negative divergence. And uh, this still has to prove anything here on, on the positive side. So in, in context of the size of this rally, this is actually kind of disappointing action. And I think that's something everyone should keep a close eye on as well, because negative divergence, as you know, is something I'm watching closely. Here is the industrials. You know, here we are near all-time highs. I remind everyone this pattern is still active. It still hasn't disproven the break of the bull trend. So we'll see what the industrials will say going forward. But again, just a few down days, one, two, three down, real down days, and we, we see these wedge breaks everywhere. So the, the market's really on the knife's edge here, right? It requires ever higher prices to avoid these breaks. It keeps producing ever higher prices at the same time, but it does so, on, uh, and it requires ever more volatility compression. So something will have to give shortly, and I'm um, curious to see how this will play out. We, we finally saw some earnings, right, on Friday, and it, it's fascinating. I mean, JP Morgan came out, record highs, everything is great, and they're making money because of high yields, they said, even though yields dropped significantly the first quarter. But... You know, stock looked great. Big power to the upside above the daily Bollinger Band. But again, I have to say, guys, you know, what have we actually done market-wise in, in, the, in the big grand scheme of things? I mean, we're still in the same range that we've been in for the last year and a half, basically, right? So, you know, with all this rallying that's been going on, we still haven't seen a sustained breakthrough on, on any sort. Um, and... It, you kind of have to question also the the sentiment in 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 general. When, when this is the Disney, you know, this <laughs> what what can I say, right? We we're launching a streaming service at what six ninety nine a month, and it's going to be not profitable for at least five years. That's what they say, and investors respond with adding twenty five billion dollars in market cap on on just. Uh, gap up and go. Okay. Um, be curious to see if this actually is, is sustainable in the shape or form. But it, it speaks to sentiment, right? Um, we'll latch at anything and, and we'll, we're willing to pay for it. Uh, and I think investors in Lyft, for example, are seeing that that sometimes is not a wise path forward. But, you know, you would think that with the reaction in JP Morgan and, and Disney, you know, there's no, you would expect new highs on the Dow, but there hasn't been yet. The Dow remi remains in this larger pattern here, uh, has not broken out here, has formed a new channel. And, and just like with the gaps on S&P and some of the other charts, you got to be really wondering where, how this is going to play out because we have massive open gaps everywhere. And if this thing ultimately does correct, 
the range for potential technical correction is massive. Just here to the 38.2 fib, there's a big open gap here. That would be a massive move. You know, it wouldn't necessarily be bearish. Um, it could be bearish, but you know, obviously a 2,000 point down move on the Dow nearly. I think that'll definitely shake things up a little bit. So we'll, we'll have to see if the Dow can actually push back the January 2018 highs. S&P has done so far. Uh, the Russell has not. Uh, and certainly the Dow has not either. Um, but the Dow continues to be very steady here in the, in the channel. But keep in mind, even if we make new highs here on the Dow, which you can imagine here with a trend line, for example, it would likely still be on a negative divergence. So I, I, it's, it's an interesting story here in 2019. I think it's going to be pivotal uh, how this plays out in the next few months. But uh, at, at this point, I think volatility remains way too low. And it's obviously reflective of all the central bank intervention and, and the buybacks. So I think the real test will come when ultimately we see a spike in volatility. Because from my perspective, all this still remains within the purview of potential topping patterns. And I want to again use the 2000 example as, as a good one because this structure actually reminds me quite a bit of the 2000 example. Look, look what happened here. We had a big correction and we had a move to new highs. It got all reverted all the way back down. See, th these type of aggressive moves are not unusual within context of, of emerging bear markets. Now, I hear a lot of talk now and say, well, there is no bear market and because the yield curve inversion was basically just a fluke, right? We see this, we had this little scare here with, with the yield curve when it was inverted was promptly ignored and went back into territory and people just kept buying stocks. Well, going back to that 2000 example, watch this. And that's this here. This was, this was 2000. Remember when I said well, that we had these big rallies, new highs, da, 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 da. There also was a quick inversion of the yield curve that everybody ignored. And, and it produced three months of, I guess, happiness. And in those three months, we had a bunch of back and forth. And then the yield curve inverted again. Did that stop them from buying stocks? No. We, we even had further rallies here. But be very clear, that initial inversion here meant something. Even though everybody declared it to be, I presume, non-valid non or just a false positive, if you will. Because 11 months later, the U.S. actually did go into a recession. So I'm, I'm, I'm just telling everybody, just keep an open mind here. I know everybody's now saying, well, you know, it's a fake inversion. That's exactly the pattern we had in, in, in 2000. Oh, and look, it was in April. <laughs> Interesting timing, isn't it? So what did markets do then? Well, they actually rallied into, guess what? September. Remember those trend lines I mentioned, right, into going into October for the apex. Didn't make quite new highs here, but there was still positivity in, in the market. Uh, but the recession was coming and markets peaked here. Well, they peaked obviously in March, but they had this counter rally here that peaked in September. And then it was nothing but downhill with obviously trading opportunities long and short in, in, in the meantime. So to, from my perspective, I think everybody should keep an open mind and no one should declare victory of any sort. The economy will do what the economy will do. And obviously right now it's subject to a lot of artificial liquidity and job owning and, and, and what have you. So I will again say how much of this rally so far is really related to the, to the Fed and to buybacks and to job owning. Because if, if, if it really is not supported by the larger economy, then a lot of this rally will have to be given back at some point. And if, if the yield curve is any indication here, uh, then I think everybody actually be paying very close attention to this because this would imply a recession would happen in early 2020, coinciding with the U.S. election. Not, I think, what most people are expecting at the moment. Finishing off here with the chart of the ES, the S&P futures, uh, again, massive wedge, 
smaller wedge forming we actually closed right at the top of the wedge here on on friday uh, we've moved above the January 2018 highs. Dow has not, Russell has not. May still come. You know, we, we may continue in this channel here. May even go to the very top here. I don't know. Um, notice the five email, which is the exponential moving average, continues to hold support. Uh, but again, these patterns are getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And this trend line is as steep as it gets. So it really just takes one or two down days and we could see a significant break, which then would open up the corrective path to these lower FIPS, if you will. You know, obviously a lot of support here and there will be a lot of back and forth. But keep in mind, these things can turn fast, as we saw last year. Anyways, hope this was all helpful. And I'll catch you uh, next time. Thanks again for your attention and thanks for subscribing. And I'll catch you guys on Twitter. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.